One question I get very often is how many hours a day should you spend learning how to code? Should you do one hour a day, two hours, three hours? What if you have a full-time job? What if you have kids, etc.? And obviously this is a very nuanced question with a lot of different factors to consider. But in this video, as someone who's worked with dozens of beginners in all different situations and from all different backgrounds, I'm going to give you my personal best answer. And just in case you don't know who I am and wondering why you should listen to this random person, hey, my name is Ayman. I transitioned from working a blue collar job into an $80,000 software engineering job in under six months of learning. I've interviewed at massive companies like Canva and I've been recruited for dozens of six figure jobs throughout my career. So for example, if we click into this image here, you can see we were recruited for a job with a salary of 160K per year. And not to mention the dozens of results I've gotten for my students who I've helped learn to code, transition into tech and land high paying coding jobs. So now that we have that out of the way, let's dive straight into the video. So how many hours a day you should learn how to code really depends on how quickly you want to land a job. Obviously, some people want to land a job in three months, others six months, nine months, 12 months, etc. And after working with hundreds of students over the last few years, I've developed a formula that will help you determine exactly how many hours is correct for you. And that formula can be seen on the right of the screen or video here. So how quickly you learn to code and land your first job is determined by three main factors. The first is how many learning hours you put in per day as you can see here and the second is how focused you are during those hours which is what we see here and then third is the quality of the learning resources you are actually using to learn which is what we see here so in a nutshell how quickly you land your first coding job depends on how many hours you're putting in how focused they are and how high quality the learning resources you are using R. And in this video, I'm going to break down how you can optimize each of these steps one by one so you can land a job as quickly as possible while also putting in as little time as possible. And what better way to start with the easiest and most straightforward one of these variables to get down, which is the amount of hours that you put in. So like I said, this one is pretty simple and straightforward. My general recommendation in terms of how many hours to put in would be the following. If you want to land your first job in three to four months, then you code at least 25 to 30 hours per week. And I believe that comes out to about four ish hours per day. If you want to land a job in around four to five months, then you code at least 20 to 25 hours per week. And that comes out to about three hours or so per week. If you want to land a job in six months, code at least 15 to 20 hours per week. And I believe that's around two ish hours per day. If you want to land a job in around six to nine months, code at least 10 to 15 hours per week. So that's about an hour to two hours per day. And then if you want to land a job in around 12 months, then code at least five to 10 hours per week. So that's about 30 minutes to an hour per day. Now, with that being said, and this is very, very important to understand, those recommendations assume that one, those learning hours will be of high focus. So you're actually going to be very, very dialed in and focused during those learning hours. And two, the learning will be carried out using high quality learning material. So if you're going through the worst, most outdated course ever, these recommendations are not gonna work. And honestly, these two variables are far more important to have down than the amount of hours that you put in. So having these two here down is much more important than just having this one down. And the reason that is, is because you could learn to code eight hours a day. But if you're getting distracted every five minutes, you're checking social media every five minutes, your family's asking you to get up and do favors every five minutes, you're going to move slower and make a lot slower progress than you actually could. And the harsh part is someone could be putting only two hours in per day. But if those hours are focused and they have productivity tactics in place, they're not getting distracted, they're not checking their phone. They're super zoned in on this one task. So one person's putting in two hours, you're putting in eight, but you guys are making the exact same level of progress. And in the same vein, you could be putting in all of the hours in the world and you could be as focused during those hours as you want to be. If the quality of your learning resources aren't good and you're learning from some outdated university material or you're learning from some crappy course from 10 years ago, it doesn't matter how fast you move. It doesn't matter how fast you move if you're moving in the wrong direction. So with that being said, now that we have the hours variable in place, it's very, very important that you learn how to optimize these two other variables, which is what we will do now. Starting with the focus variable. So optimizing the focus variable comes down to three very simple steps. The first step is improving your focus and making you more dialed in. The second is removing distractions that could hinder your focus. And the third is having a locked in routine in place to make it easier to get into focus and get into flow. So for improving focus, the first thing we're going to do is meditate 10 to 20 minutes 
every morning. And I know this sounds a bit woo woo. It sounds a bit spiritual, but we're not doing it for that reason. The only reason we're doing this is meditating gets you very good at focusing on one thing for a extended period of time because you're just sitting there and you're focusing on your breath. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing when we're learning to code. We're going to be focusing on one thing for an extended period of time, whether that's focusing on building this project or focusing on watching this crash course or focusing on following this guided project. And meditation is basically just going to help us train our attention span and get us better at sitting down and working and coding for long periods of time. So this is a must, must do. Now, the second point is exercising minimum five times a week. So I don't need to be the millionth person to tell you why exercise is good, but moving your body, making sure that you're breaking a sweat is going to keep you fresh. It's going to keep you active. It's going to keep you alert. So I don't care how you get this exercise in. I don't care whether you go to the gym or whether you walk or whether you go for a run just make sure you're breaking a sweat at least five times a week now third is stop doing drugs and alcohol so obviously you're an adult you make your own choices but this is strictly just a recommendation and the reason why we do this is because when you're learning to code you need every single bit of brain power that you can get your brain is literally forming new synapses new connections new neurons it's basically like learning a new language or speaking the language of computers. And unfortunately, drugs and alcohol literally kill your brain cells. So that's obviously not going to help you learn to code more quick. So if you can stop doing this, you'll make more progress. It's just a simple truth. And again, you make this decision on your own, but this is strictly just a recommendation. Now, next is sleeping seven to nine hours every single day. So again, I don't need to be the millionth person to tell you why sleep is good. But again, just like exercise, getting a good amount of sleep every night is going to keep your body fresh. It's going to keep you active. It's going to keep you alert, which is going to allow us to be more on it, more focused and dialed in when we're learning to code. Now, the next step, like I said, is removing distractions. So for this one, the first thing you want to do is get Get off of social media. Again, this is strictly a recommendation and I know not everyone's going to follow this step, but it is a very, very, very strong recommendation. And the reason I say this is there is so much BS out there, so much fear mongering. And honestly, the reason why I quit learning how to code at one point in my self-taught journey was because I got back on social media and I saw all this stuff about the layoffs and then AI taken over and it's just extra mental waste, mental load that you don't need to worry about. So I'd strongly, strongly recommend getting off of social media. There's so much BS on there, so much negativity around the whole tech space. And unfortunately, that is never going to change regardless of whether the tech industry is booming or whether it's going down, there's always going to be negativity out there. Now, next is no video games. So the reason why we do this is because it's strictly just a time thing. So if you're someone who's working a full time job and you're balancing a lot of things, chances are you're not going to have a lot of time in your day to learn to code. So we basically just want to get rid of every unnecessary activity that we can and dedicate that to learning to code. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't rest or you shouldn't have some fun or you shouldn't you know, take a break every now and again. But for this period of time in your life, you're making a huge transition. You're trying to break into an industry that allows you to earn six figures, that allows you to work remotely, that allows you to travel the world. So obviously it's going to take a little bit of sacrifice. So if that means sacrificing the two hours of Netflix that you have at the end of your day and dedicating that to learning to code, or sacrificing the two hours of video games at the end of your day and then dedicating that to learning to code just for the next three to six months. You're going to be a lot better off. And then once you land your first coding job, you can go back to playing your video games. You can go back to watching your Netflix or whatever. Trust me, I know so many coworkers who are just working a few hours a day and enjoying life after it, doing all of the things that I just mentioned. But just for this transitionary period of your life, strongly recommend this. Now, next is phone off in a drawer airplane mode on the other side of the house. So what I mean by this is when when you are learning to code, you do not want any distraction. Coding is honestly one of the most intensive activities that you will ever do, especially when you're learning it. So what you want to do is just put your phone off, put it on airplane mode, put it in a drawer on the other side of your house so that for the next one, two, three hours, you can just strictly focus on coding. And trust me, this is going to be an absolute game changer in terms of your productivity. When you don't have notifications buzzing on your phone every three seconds, it's a lot easier to stay focused and watch a crash course. So this is literally a non-negotiable when you're learning how to code. Now, next is having a locked in routine. First thing I would say is sleep and wake up at the same time every day. So again, I don't need to be the millionth person to tell you why sleeping and waking up and having a 
solid sleep schedule in place is good but if you're sleeping at 12 a.m one day and then 6 p.m the next day and then 8 p.m your body's going to be kind of out of whack and you're not going to be as alert as switched on as you could be and we want every single advantage we can get when we're learning to code so this is a strong strong recommendation now the next is planning the next day in 30 minute intervals every single night and sticking to it so if you don't plan your days and you don't actually have a routine in place around when and what time you're going to code you're never going to stick to it you're going to be at breakfast and telling yourself okay i'll code after work today and when you get home from work you will tell yourself i'm going to code after an hour of tv and then after the hour of tv you're going to tell yourself okay just one hour of video game and so on and so forth and you're going to keep pushing it on until you get to the end of the day and realize oh i haven't done any coding today but when you plan the next day and you block it in and it's non-negotiable you basically have no excuse to not learn to code and it holds you accountable. So strong, strong recommendation here. Now the next is coding every single day. Guys, when you are learning to code, it is like learning a language, like I mentioned earlier. And when you learn a language every single day, and let's say you wanted to learn French, for example, right? If you move to France and you were speaking French every single day and you were getting exposed to it every single day, you would learn French so so quickly because your brain is being exposed to it every single day you have no choice but to learn but on the other hand if you're doing french classes three times a week it's going to take you infinitely longer to learn how to speak french properly for example i did french classes for the last five years a couple times a week and i still barely know how to speak french but i guarantee you if i moved to france i would be speaking french within six months and the same thing applies with learning to code when you learn to code every single day your brain has no choice but to pick it up so much more quickly because it's just being exposed to it again and again and again whereas if one day you're coding and then the next two days you're not and then you're coding again and then three days you're not who do you think is going to learn more quickly even if the hours stay the same the person who's being exposed to it every single day so this is literally a non-negotiable you need to code every single day i don't care if it's 30 minutes i don't care if it's just a small amount of time where you actually just look at the code you need to be exposing yourself to code every single day now the next is coding first thing in the morning so there's this productivity tactic that i learned called eating a frog and essentially what it says is you should do the most mentally demanding and important task in your day at the beginning and there's basically no other more mentally demanding task than learning how to code so what i'd recommend is coding first thing in the morning getting it out the way so you don't have to worry about it for the rest of the day now for those of you who have work and start in the morning let's say you start at 9 a.m or 8 a.m that's going to mean that you are going to have to wake up a little earlier to get those hours of coding in and i remember when i was learning to code i woke up at 5 a.m every single day to get in my two hours of coding in the morning and then I'd go into work. So this one isn't mandatory. You can get away with just coding in the evenings, but the hours you put in in the morning are just going to be so much better. You're going to have so much more energy. Whereas when you're trying to learn to code in the evening, you're going to be a little more tired from work. You're going to have less energy. So this is just a very strong recommendation. Now, next is utilizing your weekends. So a lot of you guys are working full-time jobs and you don't have that much time during the weekdays to learn how to code. And that's why weekends are going to be your strongest weapon. And what I I mean by this is when i was learning to code i would code about an hour or so per day on the weekdays maybe a little extra if i got off of work early but on weekends i would code around three to four hours every single day and that really really massively brought up the amount of weekly hours i was doing and hence allowed me to land the job a lot more quickly so if you're working a full-time job weekends are going to be your best friend and i highly recommend taking the approach of doing less on the weekdays to make it more manageable and doing more on the weekends to catch up on lost time and that's pretty much everything you need to implement for the focus category or the focus variable very simple very straightforward but you need to be implementing each of these i highly 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 recommend each of these points now the third and final variable is quality resources and the advice i'm going to give you for this one is buy my program okay just kidding but in terms of finding quality resources it's difficult to recommend specific resources as things are always changing new resources always coming out old resources always going out of date so it's difficult to recommend any other program besides my own but one piece of of advice i can give you is paid resources will always be a hundred times better and a hundred times faster than free resources and this is the number one limiting belief i see in newbie developers because there's so much content out there that shines a bad light on courses boot camps and paying for resources to learn how to code even though they'll happily spend fifty thousand plus on a degree just to end up underskilled and unemployed but 
I digress. I mean, these content creators will tell beginners that we can all learn to code completely for free and land the job in three months as if we're living in some kind of fantasy world where everyone can just watch YouTube videos and magically land six figure jobs. And if it were that simple and that easy, everybody would be doing it. But that's simply just not the reality. What you need to realize is if you want to break into tech, it's going to require a significant investment from you. And that investment can be either time or money. And if you want to figure out everything on your own without putting down any money, you're going to have to accept that it's just going to take more time. And unfortunately, I'm talking you. But if you want to save your time, fast track your progress and move 10 times faster, then you're going to have to invest money. It's either one or the other. There's no shortcut around this. And in my personal opinion, I've come to realize that you should always put down money over time because time is the most valuable and scarce resource that we have. Every single second that you're spending watching this video, you will never get back. Money, on the other hand, you can always make more of it. Look, I've literally seen people in my life pass away and it's made me realize that life is finite. And I've come to the conclusion that life is way too short to waste my one existence on this earth. This one chance that I get at life to save a few thousand dollars. So that's my personal opinion on this. Obviously you make your own choices, but I hope this sort of led you in the right direction. But that is pretty much all for today's video. If you make sure to keep your learning hours focused using the tactics and advice I gave you today and make sure that you have quality learning resources in place, you can choose any of the recommended weekly or daily hours that I've walked through in this video based on how quickly you want to land a job. And if for any reason you've made it this far into the video and you're still doubting or questioning my advice, let me know when you're consistently landing your students high paying coding jobs and we can have a conversation now if you want to learn more about how to learn to code and break into tech make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel watch the video that's about to pop up on the screen now if you want a full guide on everything you need to learn to code and land your first job from scratch and if you're interested in getting one-on-one -on -one coaching to land your first 60 to 100k coding job in the next three to six months guaranteed apply to join the coding bootcamp with the first link in the description thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video